Retro Future. Welcome to another uh, stream on Radio Retro Future. And today we have a very special guest, a fellow countryman to be exact, Callum Stomp. Hello, Callum. How are you doing? Up, man, I'm actually doing pretty well. It's uh, it's a little bit late over here. It's the nice. It's like 8 p.m. or something. I'm, I'm feeling good. How are you? Yeah, doing fine. Uh, busy, 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 busy. Um, for the you're busy with. Oh, uh, well, let's see. A lot actually. Uh, working on a new act, so that is something we're spending a lot of time on. And also, um, I've been on another podcast as a guest for a change. Uh, story punks and they're doing a triple episode on me so really curious what the feedback uh, on that will be um, nice. <laughs> so that's uh, that's a nice for a change and yeah a lot of projects a lot of work awesome i like the setting that you're in uh you, you got a nice cozy place over there oh yeah oh you haven't seen half of it this is just my bedroom but nice. uh <laughs> Uh, again, I, I made a video I could send you uh, of the rest of the place, what it's uh, like now, if you want. Um, but awesome, let's do it. All right. Yes, because we're here to talk about uh, your con uh, about your project. But before we uh, get into that, let's talk a little bit about who uh, Colum is. Sure, yeah. Uh, so my name is Callum Stamp. I uh, also live in Holland, like you do. Um, and I've been an animator basically for all my life. So what I do is I make cartoons and I make animations. I, I do the music and the sound effects and the voices. And I've been doing that for a really long time. Um, and ever since I kind of started doing music, I started getting interested in, you know, you'll do music videos. So you'll have cameras and actors and stuff like that. And then that whole love for animation kind of transformed into just a love for storytelling in general. And then I started you know, writing scripts, doing short films and stuff like that. And then I directed my first feature when I was 22, I think. And that was a, a you know, a little indie comedy, a road trip movie. And then when the premiere happened of that film, I was just so happy. The film was called Dreamers, and it was you know about following your dreams and uh, making something of yourself, even though there might not be too much yet because you're young. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea started to create something even bigger. Um, you know, I've always been dreaming about doing this grand epic story you know um, we all grow up with stories like back to the future or lord of the rings or you know big science fiction or fantasy epics um, and i thought it was time you know it's 2018 or 2019 we can do this now i, I mean people are making the most awesome things with their iphones nowadays oh, yeah. uh, so i could get this off the ground i could probably do this and it was a little naive but i'm really happy that i did make that decision all right, uh, because the project you are talking about now is a rekindle. So I guess we can just jump straight to that. Uh, what is that like? It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So rekindle is the idea that I came up with four years ago at that premiere of that film. And it essentially is um, a very quaint, small story about a girl, uh, you know, coming of age, kind of finding herself and, uh, you know, unlocking her emotions in this big story. Um, and Rekindle kind of started out as this project that was kind of a bit similar to something like a Guardians of the Galaxy or Star Wars A New Hope in a way that it's sort of this big drop, but it's essentially about a character leaving home and finding new family members or new friends. So mm -hmm. that's what interested me about the story to tell it in a live action kind of way. And right now we've been at it for, for a long time, but since... I think one year ago, we've really stepped it up. The fans have donated some money, and uh, now we're able to actually make the thing. So I've been working with costume teams, prop teams, visual effects artists from all over the world, and, of course, the actors. I've, I've been doing that for the past year, and we just recently showed the very first footage in the cinema. This was last weekend, and we're, we're ready to go now, which is so exciting. All right, so um, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the the story itself um, because we, I already had a, a little bit of a preview uh, a while back. Um, you already talked a little bit about a coming of age. Um, where does the story get its inspiration from? It's a very good question. So uh, I did mention a, a couple of things from the eighties and nineties. Um, I feel like that kind of movie magic is a little bit missing nowadays. So I really want to infuse this film with a bunch of those 
um, you know, things that I grew up with watching, you know, the big uh, wow moment in Jurassic Park when you finally saw the Brontosaurus, you know, with the long mm-hmm, neck and mm-hmm. um, that, those kinds of moments where the music kicks in and it's a theme and it's it's this big epic feeling. I feel like we don't get those moments nowadays. So the movie, the the inspirations are kind of built on the stuff that I grew up with that really impacted me as a kid. So hopefully, you know, it'll you know, reach some kids and, you know, touch them in the exact same way that it did when I was younger watching those things. Right. Uh, I recently watched the movie Turbo Kid. Have you seen that one? I heard about it. Is that uh, the, uh, you know, the 80s inspired kind of thing? Yes, yes. It's like really, it has all these like kid adventure film vibes combined with Mad Max, except that the bad guys are on BMXs. Um, right. But it has all that tropes. The only thing is missing is like the, the the grainy feel of the film. Like they really put a lot of effort into um, like like have, having that that typical cheap eighties visual. But it's it's not grainy enough. If they if they had a little bit of grain, it would have been just that. Um, but uh, it, it's it's not a movie for the squeamish because there is a lot of over the top gore in it like a lot of it is sure, very, yeah a lot of funny but it's like okay it, it also has those hostile uh movie hostile moments if you know what i mean so uh, yeah sure <laughs> um so yeah what uh can people expect to see you already mentioned like uh the, the, the kind of the nostalgia factor is there uh what about the characters it's a good question so um, in terms of characters, we really wanted to make an ensemble piece with this one. So I mentioned Guardians of the Galaxy before, mm-hmm. but we're looking at like stuff like heist films, you know, like the Ocean's oh, Eleven right, kind yeah. of movies. Um, and I, I totally love those films because they are about gather that have a very specific skill set, you know, um, but they are not maybe made to be friends or something like that. Uh, so that's what the, where the cast kind of comes in. Uh, and what's fun about this world is it's it's a science fiction world. Um, uh, with some fantasy touches. So it kind of feels medieval in a sense, but there's still, you know, spaceships and aliens and stuff like that. It's really, you know, a fun mashup. Mm-hmm. Essentially, everybody in this world steals from each other. You know, everyone is abandoned in their own right, which is awesome. Uh, and a lot of fun to tell stories with, you know, people on the street, they will like lend each other stuff or there's no currency, there's no money or anything. Um but there are, of course, a lot of rogue people that don't play by the rules and they just steal stuff all the time. So um, we took a lot of inspiration from Aladdin as well. Um, mm-hmm. The opening moments of that animated movie are one of my favorites ever. Um, mm. So uh, the characters are inspired by these famous you know, thieves. So you could even say Robin Hood, right? Stealing from the rich to give to the poor. Characters are kind of stealing from the rich, stealing from the royals to give to themselves. So they're like like a band of <laughs> egotistical Robin Hoods or something. Um, and so there's um, a mixture between different kind of species, which I've always liked in in you know those big science fiction movies. So there's a robot character that's a lot more human than the rest of the human characters. There's this big hulking human character. There is uh, the sweet girl who has some you know power unlocked within her there is this space cowboy character which is really awesome um and there are of course the bad guys in the film there are puppet creatures that we actually made molds and puppets for uh that will be voiced and stuff like that by famous actors so it's a lot of fun you know kind of messing around with that we even have a cg character which is a flame this little tiny flame called amber uh, and she has these kind of tiny eyes. And so we kind of use all these different forms of media to create characters. You know, it's not only just characters and costumes, but also LED lights for emotions. It's CG characters, it's puppet characters and everything in between. So uh, the cast is uh, an unwieldy bunch. It's kind of like uh, like a band of misfits. And yeah, they don't really like each other at first, but they come to kind of love each other. Mm-hmm. Just like a real family like a real family and then they hate each other again for a few weeks and then they love each other again <laughs> right all right so uh you mentioned uh famous actors uh are there some familiar faces you are willing to reveal on the show 
Oh man, you're putting me on the spot right here. Well, um, we have uh, in in terms of famous actors, we live in the realm that's like the comic con audience, right? That's mm -hmm. that's the main right. audience of this film, which is really cool because we don't have a film like that in Holland at this moment. Even though right. it's an international film, you know, it's it's for all ages, but also for you know everyone. It's spoken in English and not in Dutch, which is a, you know, a big change for me. Um, but it's, it's so much fun to see that the audience of this film grew up playing video games and grew up uh, you know, watching those kind of films. This is a completely new audience, right? Mm -hmm. Than uh, mm -hmm. the stuff that we were used to when we were kids. Um, so for me, it was very important to look into that kind of a pool where I, when I was looking for talent for this thing, right? I mean, um, I wouldn't necessarily go for you know, these big seasoned actors but maybe some voice actors that I grew up listening to in my living room when I was playing a video game or something like that. Um, in terms of announcements, um, we are, I think, two days away from uh, from a very, very big reveal. That's when we'll actually reveal that the movie is actually in production, which is awesome. Uh, and no secret to the crew, because we've been doing it for a year, but mm -hmm. uh, we finally have enough to show, and we'll also be showing off a lot of reveals in terms of the cast. And for those of you who play video games, there's probably a couple of actors in there that you'll know for sure. Like that's just a no brainer. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of those in there that have been doing some great work in the recent couple of years. Um, I'd say if you're a Nintendo fan, if you like Dragon Ball, then uh, yeah, there are a couple of uh, things in here that will make you very, very happy. All right. All right. Interesting. Now something um, I heard you talk about in the past, but Maybe interesting for the people uh, who are not familiar with these types of productions, um, like how, um, what is the the intention? Where can people see it, and how is it funded? Because that's quite an interesting story, I think. It's interesting, yeah. So I feel like these days it's really hard to envision your movie just going to a movie theater, right? Um, so the goal of this uh, little production that we're making, Rekindle, is to eventually end up on some sort of you know, streaming service so people can just freely watch it and they'll you know, pay a subscription fee for all the rest of the content and our thing will be on there as well and you can just watch it and it's no big hassle. Um, we feel like it'll also be really cool to have it in cinemas um, but that'll you know mean a lot of distribution stuff, and uh, we're, we are in the middle of those talks. But there's nothing uh, to announce at this moment. So the idea is to um, yeah to get it to streaming, and if that would be with a great service like Netflix or with an awesome service like Videoland or something like that, maybe in between Amazon, something like that. Those are all services that I thoroughly enjoy on a daily basis, um, and there are a couple of Holland only ones that are great too. Um, so we've been looking around, you know, what the tone of this thing is and where it fits. Our idea is that streaming is the future, of course, as you know, as we are streaming right, right now. Um, and I feel like it's the same for film, and I feel like it's the same for music and stuff like that. Um, and it has been for the past couple of years. It'll only grow. And for this film, I just want it to be very clear that this thing is you know created by people that grew up in the digital era mm -hmm. um, that were literally born when the internet was kind of you know blooming so I feel like it's just a natural fit for this thing to become just a streaming thing right all right um, interesting so uh, how do you get the funding done uh, do you have sponsors is it all fan funded it's a really good question um, we're fortunate enough to actually have failed a lot in the past, which is weird to say, but failing, uh, as Master Yoda, of course, says it, the greatest teacher failure is. So uh, that's what I live by. Uh, so I hope to fail a lot in my life. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, um, I do believe that um, it comes from a great place when you fail and you have to get up for things. We did a Kickstarter campaign about two years ago and uh, we did not meet the goal that we wanted. It was too high. Uh, we didn't have nearly enough to show for it for people to really connect to the brand. And that kind of, um, you know, we went through an area that was like, oh, can we can we really do this? Should we should we restart this thing and try again, or should we just quit? And people don't really want to see it. And then when we started to kind of push a little bit more and and, and reveal a little bit more story, 
actually people started to fund directly to us. So we had to start like a PayPal thing on the website. Mm. And just when we thought, you know, all hope was lost and we did fail and we stumbled and we fell, um, we kind of got lifted up by the fans of this thing, which is great because um, there are single fans who on their own donated 5,000 euros to this thing, which is incredible if you think about what kind of commitment that is to a brand. So mm -hmm. everybody who donated, uh, we'll try to keep them in the loop of where the film is going and what's happening with it. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, it's it's mostly fan funded. However, we we all voluntarily work on this thing. So we don't take money out of, out of the bank uh, by working on it. Mm -hmm. um, so we all contribute so much, the entire crew, everybody who makes a costume or makes a weapon for the thing. Um, right. I feel like they pay their dues more than enough. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Well, we covered enough. Um, can you, is there something else you want to reveal about the project because you didn't want to make it this long? Um, that's a good question. Well, there is a very important thing that I've touched up a little, you know, uh, in, in the past minutes, mm -hmm. and that's that in two days, the 8th of February, we'll be actually uh, announcing this thing for real. So you've got the scoop right here. So th that's really cool. Um, you're the first one to kind of openly uh, uh, discuss this thing with me, which is awesome. Um, and on the 8th of February, we'll be releasing the first footage of the thing, which right. is, you know, very big for us. We've actually done shooting days and stuff like that. And we'll show a lot of behind the scenes uh, kind of stuff. So people can kind of feel where we uh, got the inspiration from, how we went to work, who made what kind of things, but also the audition process for the actors, which is so much fun to see. And then how we transform those actors by wearing the costumes finally and their reaction to the costumes for the first time. Anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a fun thing that's going to drop in two days. And also it'll include footage in the studio with those actors that I previously mentioned and that I think a lot of your fans will definitely love to see. All right. Uh, can, uh, is it a, a closed event or can people actually go there uh, in two days? It's a reveal that is happening much like we are doing now. All right. um, so it'll, our website now has a gigantic clock on it. And props to a buddy of mine, Joey, who actually developed that website. If you go to rekindlefilm.com right now, uh, or anywhere in between now and the 8th, you'll be meted with this cool clock. And on your mobile phone, uh, you can actually move through the world of Chomi, which is the artwork that you see in the background, which is so cool. You know, I didn't even know it did that. And then I opened the website on my phone, and I was like, did you do motion tracking with this thing? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, yeah, I just tried it out. I thought it was cool. I was like, whoa, that's awesome. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, there there is a countdown, and uh, that count... It's, uh, I've been staring at it for days and it's, uh, it's almost time for the big reveal. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I'll uh, make sure to get this uh, video up as soon as possible for that. Um, now we like to, we like to, uh, end the show on uh, some words of wisdom uh, for the, for the people who are watching. Uh, so do you have a message uh, you have to share with the world? I actually do. So what I've learned doing Q and A's for this thing, and I've done maybe three in the past few weeks, um, is that people, a lot of people ask me about perfection. Uh, you know, how do you make something perfect and how do you deal with perfection when you're on a set? So if I were to give some words of wisdom, I would say to everybody who creates, to all your fans who maybe make their own costumes or props or stuff like that, I know there's a lot of people out there that do that. Um, I would say... It's more important to actually create something than to create something that's perfect. And what I mean by that is just essentially you something that you make. And if it's not perfect, you know, if a thing is green that you really want it to be purple, but it ends up being green because of factors or time or restraints, just finish the thing and it'll be green now mm -hmm. instead of purple. Mm -hmm. And you will actually have finished the thing and people can react to the thing. And maybe a lot of people will say, you know, I really appreciate that you made this thing green. And then you'll be like, yeah, I wanted that all along. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of what I noticed. So uh, my words are, of wisdom are just create things and create a lot of things and do it every day. All right. I think those are fine works uh, to end on. Um, well, uh, how can people support uh, your film and um, where can they find you? Question. Um, we have rekindlefilm.com 
And rekindlefilm.com will be the main hub for content, but it won't be the only one. We'll also have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash rekindlefilm. We have a Twitter, which is twitter.com slash rekindlefilm. And we have an Instagram that's at rekindlefilm. And actually from the 8th onward, we'll be posting daily updates. So you'll see how we created props. You'll see what happened on set. We'll even do uh, some meme stuff <laughs> in between. So uh, I hope uh, people will have a lot of fun watching the different content on our channels. And right. you can always find me, Callum Stamp. I'm just uh, you know an email away. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been incredible. Thank you for having me. And your room looks great. You should definitely uh, you know do an open house or something so I can kind of oh. sneak in and look at the oh, furniture. Oh, you're, you're more than welcome to come by uh, anytime you want. Uh, we're working on more stuff uh, as uh, as we talk. So, but um, yeah, okay. It was uh, great <laughs> having you. Um, I think something went wrong on the YouTube stream, but I have recorded it all, so I will post this um, with little editing. But everything, like the links, will be included, of course, in the description, so people will know where to find you. And well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just gonna bid you adieu. And as always, make things your way things your own.